Troy said to me this morning when I came in, he says, listen, everything and anything that could go wrong this morning has gone wrong. <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Aren't you glad that God's anointing, God's presence has nothing to do with technology? Okay? So when there's glitches in technology, you know what you do? You chuckle and you say, wow, that was funny. Okay, let's move on. But we have had just about anything and everything that could go wrong this morning, and some days are like that, and um, there's no rhyme or reason for it. It just happens. So anyhow, all right, grab your Bible. Turn with me to Luke chapter 15. Have you ever been lost? It's a fun experience, isn't it? P Peter and I were in Spain one time. What was this? Was this let's see, this is 2019. Was that 2000? 14, 15, it really doesn't matter. We were in Spain, and we got this great Airbnb downtown Palma all right, on the island of Mallorca. Now, it was kind of funny because if you've been in Spain, you know the streets like, are about this wide, all right? And we had a rental car that Peter was paranoid over. Like literally, like you should saw all the more room we had to drive in some places because we didn't want to get a scratch on it and everything. And, and so, but we had to kind of drive to get back into where our apartment was, it was like surrounded by one-way streets and there were squares and just all this stuff. It was, it was really interesting for us to find every time we would try that. The one particular day, we, we were just like all over the place. Everywhere, we were everywhere but the apartment. As a matter of fact, it was so, we were so, like we knew about where we were, but we couldn't get there. Like, literally, we could not get there. And then one time, we actually ended up, this is really funny, in Majorca is this beautiful, incredible, huge, monstrous cathedral that took 300 years to build. Amazing structure. And it has walls around it. It has places where people walk and tourists walk and all that. But Peter and I decided, well, we wouldn't want to walk where the terrorists walk. We, tourists walk. We would rather drive where they walk. We got so lost that we ended up in a car where you weren't supposed to be, where people were walking on foot. It was not a good moment. Ultimately, we did find our way back. It was quite comical. We were lost and could not find our way to where we needed to go. But how many of you have ever been lost that wasn't comical? Anybody ever been lost in a situation that has caused you fear? You know? Let me show you a... Uh, 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 where I'm going here this morning. Let me show you our church logo. We have that, Troy? <laughs> it probably glitched too. All right, now this, that's our church logo. Now, I got <laughs> dings and bangs and everything else. All right, now we have in this logo, we have two things. We have four and we have four dots. Who wants to tell me about those four dots? I can always count on that Tyrone section. I'm just telling you. Every time I ask that question, that Tyrone section is on it. I'm going to tell you something, you bunch of slackers on this side of the church. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you a challenge. I'm going to ask, I want you to, I want you to beat them sometime. All right, I, some of those people over there are related to me, and I have to hear it all the time, okay? I want to trash talk them. I want you to beat them just once. All right? We have a thing in here. It's about the personal transformation. All right, that these four dots are representative of our individual lives in Christ. How many of the Bible says that we're transformed into the image of Christ? I wasn't born that way. I know it's hard for you to imagine. But what happens in our life, we go through a series of progression. We were lost, found, we grow, and we go. How many know that should be the natural progression of a believer's life? You, you never were meant to stay lost. You certainly were meant to be found. And then... How I many know once you are found, you're not meant to not grow into the image of Christ? And once you grow, then you go and you do something with it. I want to focus on this this morning for a few moments on this word lost and talk a little bit about found. And so today's message is entitled simply lost. All right. And I'll take you to a portion of Scripture. This Scripture is found in chapter 15. And I'll just kind of reference a few things. In this, what does the definition of lost biblically mean? Let me give you some illustrations, all right? First of all, lost means a state ending in ruin. How many of you ever lost something tangible 
that you lost it to ruin. That it was just, it was just ruined, right? How many of you, have you ever heard somebody say, I lost a home in a hurricane? What does it mean you lost it? It means you lost it to ruin. Peter pastored in Florida. Which hurricane was it? Charlie. Hurricane Charlie did considerable damage to their church down there. And then he went to the state of Indiana, pastored, and a tornado destroyed the church he was at there. Then he went to Columbia a few weeks ago, and they had two earthquakes while I was there. How many of you know you don't want Peter coming to where you are? <laughs> okay, there's a theme going on here. All right, now, also it means a state of uselessness or a state of misery, I could even say. All right, now, let's take a look at this. In this chapter 15, there are three illustrations that Jesus uses about lost objects, lost people, lost animal. All right, one is a sheep, one is a coin, and one is a lost son. He did this because the Pharisees were not happy with him eating with and hanging out with sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes. Because, I mean, no, they were too religious to hang out with those types of people. How many know there are no those types of people? Can I just remind us that? Somebody told me years ago that they didn't think they had to come into the church and sit by those people. Well, I'm glad those people no longer have to sit by those people. <laughs> Tell you something, you ain't no better than anybody else. The blood of Jesus makes us all equal. All week, he didn't, he didn't shed one more blood drop for me than he did for you and vice versa. Daddy's phone's ringing. Oh, mama's phone's ringing. Man, did you see how fast he threw her under the bus? That's just like, boom. <laughs> like, boom. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to say something about the Patriots, but I won't. So now in this portion of Scripture, Jesus uses the illustration of a woman who lost a coin, a, man, a shepherd who lost a sheep, and a shepherd, or a man who lost a son. And when you look at this, I want you to understand each one of these is different, each situation is different, each circumstance is different. But there's one thing that all have in common. It was the state of lostness. And I want to give you a definition this morning of what it means for us to be lost. All right? Lost it, being lost is a state of separation, okay? It is a state of separation. The coin was separated from the owner. The sheep was separ separated from the shepherd. And the son was separated from the father. Lost is being separated from the attributes and nature of God. W when I reject his ownership of my life, how many know it will leave me in a lost condition? When I reject his shepherding of my life, it will leave me in a lost state. When I reject him as my father of my life, it will leave me in a lost state. Now, again, the sheep separated from the shepherd, the coin from the owner, the son from the father. Lostness is a found in a state of separation from God. And so I want to focus, though, for illustration purposes today on the lost coin, all right? The lost coin, let's read it this morning. Verse eight, or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Father, Use your word this morning in our lives. Let us see this incredible God who loves us so much that he was the one who was seeking us. It wasn't us who found him. It was you who found us. And Father, let us understand what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this woman has 10 coins. She loses one, right? No big deal, right? That's a big deal. I won't even get into all that this morning. But I want to talk to you for a few moments about this. Let's talk about the separation for a moment. That this coin was lost because it was separated from the owner. Now, let me ask you a question. Okay? 
I need, I, need, I need somebody to help me here this morning. Brett, come here. Since you're the man of the hour today. All right, I'm, I'm going to put something in your hand. What is that? How much is that worth? 25 cents. Everybody sees this quarter. Brett has a quarter that's worth 25 cents. Okay, got it? It's lost. What's it worth now? No, it's still worth 25 cents. Somebody else can get it. Though. Somebody else can have it. Yeah, you ain't going to go get it, are you? You ain't searching for it, are you? You're not like the woman, are you? But the fact of the matter is, listen to me, I put it in his hand, it was worth 25 cents. It's hidden. It's lost. It's still worth 25 cents. So what's my point? My point is this. Understand something this morning. This coin that she lost, it was worth the same in her hand as it was when it was not in her hand. What's the point? Lost or found does not change the value of the coin. All right? Lost or found does not change the value of the coin. Listen to me this morning. The principle I'm going to share with you now is lost or found does not change the value of the coin, but it does still the purpose of the coin. Let me go here this morning. Listen to me for a moment. Whether you know him or whether you don't know him, whether you're born again or not born again, your value to God and your worth to God does not change whether you're in a lost state or a found state. Your value is the same. Your value is exactly the same, saved or unsaved. Listen to me, because the Bible clearly tells me something. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now listen to me for a moment. It does not say, for God so loved Christians, for God so loved believers. It says, for God so loved the world. How many of you are part of the world? Your value to him never changed from being saved. I was just as valuable to God, unsaved, as I was saved. I was just as valuable in his eyes. Right? But look at this. But lost or found doesn't change the value of the coin. But it does steal the purpose of the coin. All right, think about this for a moment. The coin was worth the same no matter where it was. The value was the same. In the master's hand or out of the master's hand. Purpose could not be found in a lost state. Right? I got another quarter. And the only way that this quarter can fulfill the purpose for which it was given to me is if I keep possession of it and use it. The only way that you can ever achieve the purpose of God has for you in your life is to be in his hand. You see, a lot of people, they want to serve their own purposes. A lot of people want to be about their own purposes, live their own life. But the fact of the matter is, in a lost condition, separated from the master, separated from the owner, separated from the one, the Bible says, bought us. We were bought at a price. That our purpose can only be found in the hand of the master. Fulfilled purpose cannot be found out of the hand of the master. Listen to me. I was born, I was raised, I was a perfect child. And she should have jumped up and she should have yelled amen. Okay. And, 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 and all of a sudden, like, like, and I had value to God. And I've done a lot of things. Where a lot of things I've done, I've been able to find joy in for a season. But I never found the purpose for my life until I gave my life to the master. I was never able to fully fulfill and live out the purpose of my life separated from his hand. There's a lot of people that want to live their life in a way to get to heaven, but not live their life in his hand. There's a big difference. Purpose is only found in the hand of the master. Do you want purpose and meaning to your life? Get in the hand of the master. Many people are looking for meaning, looking for purpose, separated from the owner. They want it outside of his hand. The Bible tells me about a group of men that the Bible called unschooled ordinary men. How many know we qualify? Unschooled ordinary men, but in his hand they became world changers. 
In his hand, they became apostles and prophets and great men. In his hand, they cast out demons. In his hand, they raised the dead. In his hand, they did all these different things through them. They fulfilled the purpose for their life. So this coin was lost because it was separated from the master. And yet, lost or found, it was the same value. But lost or found, it had the same value. When it was in a lost state, it could not fulfill the purpose of the master. But let me say this to you. Here's one. But the lost coin was lost in the house because it wasn't in the hand. Now, what am I saying? The Lord showed me this early this morning. That many people are lost in the house because they aren't in the hand of the master. We're there, but we're not possessed. We're there, but we serve no purpose because we're not in his hand. We're there, we have value, but it's purposeless because we aren't in his possession. We're there, but not owned. We're in the church, but we're not possessed by God. We're in the house, but we're not in his hand. We're in the house, but we're not owned by him. We want enough to get to heaven, but I don't want him to be the possessor of my life. We want enough that I can get through this life to get to the eternal life when actually the Bible says the eternal life starts from the moment I believe. And we want to be in the house but not in the hand. And God's saying today, no, no, I don't want you just in the house. I want you in my hand. I want you in my hand because it's in my hand that you find your greatest purpose. It's in my hand that you find your greatest meaning. It's in my hand that I can do things with you that you never thought would ever happen in your life. Let me tell you something. Lost or found? Let me tell you something. Wait a minute. Let me me go here. Many believers today are living short of the purpose because they are in the house but not the hand. They're living far short of the purpose of God for their life because they're living in the house but they're not in the hand. Lost or found, the master owns the rights to the coin. Lost or found, listen to me. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. You're not your own. Listen to me this morning. I want to tell you something. If you have a biblical worldview, if you believe in what the Bible says, you're not your own. If you believe what the Bible says, you were created by God. If you believe what the Bible says, you were created for a reason and a purpose. And before you were born, he knew you. Before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. While you were in your mother's womb, you were fearfully and wonderfully made. You're knit together. All the things that we believe. That you are not the exclusive rights holder to your life. I would suggest this to you today. That when you and I declare to God he has no rights to our life. We've given the rights over to the devil. Boy, nobody liked that. God had the right to tell Adam and Eve how to live in the garden. But when they took their rights upon themselves, how many know it gave rights over to the enemy? I'm hurrying on because I got a lot to say to you this morning. Think about this. So you got this coin. It's lost, separated from the master. Still has value, no matter where it's at, same value. It's lost. Stripped of its purpose, robbed of its purpose. But now the woman, she's got nine other coins. She's got nine others. But I'm going to find that one. The Bible says she sweeps the house. She turns on a lamp. She searches carefully. She's like cleaning the house. She's got guests coming. How many of you ever lived through that? How many of you ever lived through that as a child? We got company coming. How do you know? Because everything is hidden in a closet now. We dusted places that haven't been dusted in 20 years. That's not true. My mother was a clean freak. She's sweeping. She's looking. She's searching. She's desperate to find it. And she finds it. 
And she says, let's have a party. Let's rejoice with me. Now, I want to talk about this word found for a moment. Because this is incredibly important. The coin was lost, but now it's found. Let me give you three definitions. To find the thing sought. To return to a place. How many know the coin was coming back to the hand? To come to know God. Come on. How many know that's a great day? So this found. This object that was lost would now become a source of joy. Because that which was destroyed was now restored. That which would end in ruin would not end in ruin. That which was rendered useless is now useful. That which was separated from the owner was now returned to the owner. The coin was in a lost state but became found by the actions of the owner. It was sought because it had value. It was sought because it had purpose. And it went from lost to found, destruction to restoration, useless to useful. When you're living in a lost state, isolated from the owner, you cannot be used for the owner's purpose and live a selfish lifestyle where it's all about you. Now think about this. So this found. Let me talk to you for a few moments this morning about the, the state of being found. I was lost. I can tell you about what it was to be lost. Separated from the master. Separated from the father. Separated from the shepherd. I can tell you what it was like to live a life that had value but no purpose. I can tell you what it was, was to live according to my own rights and my own ways. I can tell you all about that. But then came the day that he found me. Like this woman who found this coin. And, and, and so let me talk to you a little bit about this state of found. Found is a state of being returned to the owner, to the master, to the owner. This coin, inanimate object, was brought back to the ownership of the master. Found is a state that causes heaven to rejoice. Do you see what the scripture says? The scripture says, come rejoice with me. For this coin was lost, but it's been found. In the same way, there is joy in heaven. Joy in heaven over one repentant sinner. It brings joy to the master. It brings joy to the heart of the shepherd. It brings joy to the father. It causes heaven to rejoice. But watch this. The found is a state of knowing God. It's knowing God. Listen to me this morning. Not knowing about God, but knowing God. There's lots of people who know about God. But do you know God? You say, well, can I know him? Well, yeah. How do I know him? First of all, how many know that when you come to a place of salvation by faith, how many know his Holy Spirit lives inside of you and his Holy Spirit begins to minister to you and move in you and mold you and shape you and begin to, he takes from the Father and he speaks to you and all of a sudden you begin to know him. How many know you can pick up this word which we have spent how many weeks in and you pick up this word and you begin to know him through the word. It's not just knowing about him, but you come to a place of knowing him. Listen to me. When I found a wife, I found a good thing and all the men said, Amen. good job guys. Right? But when I found her, I didn't just know about her. I came to know her. And she came to know me. And she said, oh, my. <laughs> you see, this connotation of the word found is not just knowing about. I don't want to just know about my wife. I want to know my wife. When we were dating, I didn't want to just know about her. I wanted to know her. Being found is coming into a relationship of knowing God. Not knowing about church. Not knowing church. Not knowing religion. But knowing Him. Found is a state of fulfilled purpose. I cannot fulfill the purpose without being found by Him. The sheep could live out the purpose of his life because it was found by the shepherd. The coin could live out the purpose because it was found by the woman. The lost son could live out the purpose of a son because 
He came back to the Father. Found is living in a state of sonship. The lost son comes back and becomes sons. Listen to me this morning. When you and I become saved, when you and I are born anew from above, the Bible says that we become sons of God. We're the sons of God. We're not just, we're not slaves. We're not servants. We're sons. Lost is living beneath the state of sonship. Now let me talk to you for a few moments before I go on. It's funny. Most of the time when Christians talk about the lost, we're talking about those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that certainly is. But how many know that you can be saved and still live in a partial lost condition? That you can live well below your purpose. That you can live not as a son. That you can live far beneath what God has for you. That you can live. Listen to me. When the people of God came out of Egypt, his place for them was Canaan. They were no less sons in the wilderness than they were Canaan. But in, Canaan, but in the wilderness, they were living far beneath what God had planned for them in Canaan. Many times we, went, we, went, we want just enough faith to get us out of Egypt. And I got it from here, Lord. I got it from here. That's never what he plans for you. Found isn't something that just gets us to heaven. Found is something that gives us purpose in life. Some of you today in this house, you're saved. But you still got a measure of lostness in your life. But here's where I want to really get to today. But how do I become found? You see, here's this coin. It's lost. Here's a sheep that's lost. Here's a son that's lost. Each one of them says, They've searched. They come and join me because my son was lost, but now is found. My coin was lost, but now is found. My sheep was lost, but now is found. And how do I get to a place of being found? Let me give you a, let me, let me give you a couple of scriptures. First scripture found in Luke chapter 17. Whoever tries to keep his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life will preserve it. Let me give you another one. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life because of me will find it. So let me give it to you this way. Let me sum up those two scriptures like this. If you want to find it, you have to lose it. Everybody says, I qualify. I've lost it many times. Right? If you want to find it, you've got to lose it. You cannot find new life in Christ while trying to hang on to the old life. You, you, you've got to lose it. If you want your life to be found, you have to lose your life. I'm going to give you an illustration of this in a moment. If you want your life to have purpose, you have to lose your life. If you want to live out the fullness of being found by God, you've got to give up. Right? You have to deny yourself, pick up a cross, and follow him, the Bible says. If you try to hang on to your lost life, you'll never live the found life. The found life is the hand of the master. The found life is being in the hand of the master and fulfilling the purpose for which you were created and living out the destiny. That's the found life. If you want to live out the fullness of being found, you turn from the old. You see, the secret to being found is willing to lose. Lose what? Lose, my, lose what I think I'm trying to grab a hold of and hang on to. I had to come to a place in my life where I surrendered to my will and accept his will. I had to come to a place where I had to say, it's not my life, it's your life for me. I had to come to a place where I waved a white flag of surrender. Because I'm going to tell you what, the seven years prior to that weren't working out so well. I had to come to a place where I was willing to say, whatever. You see, because I knew at 17 years of age, God called me to the ministry. To which I promptly said, no, thank you. I'll do what I want, please. And I'll go this direction. And I went that direction rather than that direction. That worked well. And then, finally... I'm 24 years old. I've got two kids. I've got a wife. I'm working for my dad. I give up. Whatever you want, God. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. I told my wife, got to go to Bible school. She cried for the next three days. <laughs> it's what it was. We had to say we're willing to give up 
what we have is a life now for what you, we think you have for us. The best decision I ever made. Best decision we ever made. Best decision. But we've never stepped into it trying to hang on to the old. If you want to find it, you got to lose it. You see, let me talk a bit about found. Being found, let me give you this phrase. Being found is an act of grace on the part of God and an act of faith on the part of the lost. It is God's grace that he finds me. It's an act of grace that the woman looked for the coin. It's an act of grace that the shepherd went looking for the lost sheep. It was an act of grace when the father ran and embraced the son when he returned. And let me tell you, he wasn't embracing the son just because he missed the son. He was embracing the son because the townspeople were going to stone the son. And they were going to throw coals at his feet. And they were going to do all these things that they were supposed to do. Because he shamed the father with a shameful request. And daddy, on an act of grace, was protecting the son. But for us, it's an act of grace. It's an act of grace to us. But the only way I can receive that act of grace... This was a step of faith. This is okay. 1987. My wife and I and two kids took a step of faith. We said, okay, I'll give up. He's calling. We got to go. And the next thing it took was a step of faith to go to school. Not really know where the next dime was coming from. Going from a house to an apartment on a campus of a school where we'd go sometimes with two weeks without water. Yeah, that'll make your wife happy when you go away. But I'm just saying that there had to be an act of faith that responded to an act of grace. The only way that you will ever live in a found state is if you, by faith, accept an act of grace. Think about this. Jesus Going into the city. There's a man who has lived his own life for as long as he's wanted. His name is Zacchaeus. Right? Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He was a, probably a wealthy man. He probably was an influential man. He probably had power. He wants to see this Jesus. You know the story. He climbs up in a sycamore tree. And Jesus looks at him and says, Come into your house, baby. Let me ask you a question. What would happen at your house today if Jesus said he was coming in an hour? Just a thought. <laughs> Just a thought. Like, uh, Jesus is going to show up in one hour. I'll bet you some of you would leave right now. And he goes to Zacchaeus' house. And all of a sudden, the people begin to question. And Zacchaeus, you, you know the story. Here, here, let's go to it. Luke chapter 19. So the Bible says that Whenever Zacchaeus was called by Jesus to come to his house, he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood, and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'm going to restore fourfold. I'm going to pay him back four times. All right? Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house because he was also a son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was a man living his own life, living according to his own way, separated from the hand of God until Jesus showed up. He became found. And all of a sudden he says, no, wait, I am a changed man. I give up the old life. I now take and I give half of what I own to the poor, and I pay back four times what I cheated. I am giving up my old life, and I'm willing to lose it for the new. Come on. That's what we need to be doing. In our life, it's about I'm willing to lose it, to get it, to find it. Think about this. I'm talking about grace. Grace caused Jesus to come to Zacchaeus' house. Faith caused Zacchaeus to respond the way that he did. Grace caused a woman to search for the coin. Grace caused the shepherd to look for the sheep. Grace caused the father to welcome the son's return. Grace is a call to the lost that must be answered.
Let me close with this. You say, wow, pretty fast, right? So it's all relative. Come on, Troy. Let's see what technology we can mess up now. Oh, man. Come this way. Come on. It's okay. It's okay. This is a legal way to come. Come on. Come on. We, we've messed up everything else today. Let's mess this up. All right. We're just going to we're just going to switch it all up. Just jump on up. Let me tell you a story. I was 12 years old just a couple years ago. And I decided I was going squirrel hunting that day. So I had someone take me down to this piece of land that we owned, that my parents owned. And it was connected to other pieces of land that other people owned. It was also connected to the state game lands. And, and so between the other property owners and between the state game lands and ours, it could be a large piece of property, a large piece of game lands and everything else. And I could literally go down there and spend all day from morning till dark and hunt my way home if I wanted to, which was several miles. And so I went there this day. I was going to hunt squirrels. I was 12 years old. Had somebody drop me off. This is back in the day where you're allowed to do that stuff. On this particular day, it was a little dark. It was a little drizzly. I hunted and I wandered around the woods. And it was becoming close to dark. When all of a sudden, I came to this realization. I was lost. I couldn't find my way out. I couldn't find my way back to where I began. I kept going in circles. I kept seeing the same stuff over and over again. Like I saw that fence post before. I kept seeing the same things over and over, but never getting out. The more I wandered, the faster I went. Because how many know when you're lost, if you go fast, it's better. It's like whenever it's, it's like whenever you're in a foreign country and they can't understand your language, you talk louder. Like that's gonna help. The faster I went, the more I got worried because time was ticking and dark was coming. And I know the monsters that lived in that woods at dark. They were different than the ones in the daytime. For a 12-year-old boy, that fear was palatable. I might even become a bit frantic knowing that I was going to be lost forever in the jungles of Dizer. I was worried, scared, going in circles. And it was getting dark. And then I heard it. Then I heard it. A sound like no other at that moment. A voice calling in the darkness. A voice calling to me in my lostness. A voice that called my name. Ha ha, I knew that voice. That was the voice of my mother. Boy didn't show up. Mama came looking. She came for me. She called for me. I now knew I might still be lost but I am found. I might be lost, but there's a way out. I might be lost, but there'd be a path back to the beginning. All I had to do was follow that voice. And I remember I yelled to her, keep yelling, I'll find you. <laughs> True story. You have to understand, I, was a, I, I, I just, I, just, I love to wander. I go to foreign countries and go wandering. How about it, Peter? We go, like, wandering down the streets. I'll tell you another story about getting lost in the Potter County one time. Yeah, that was a fun one. I got lost a lot when I was a kid. Boy, I know my way around those woods now. All I had to do was follow that voice. I yelled, keep yelling. I'll find you. I'll follow that voice. I'll come to you. The voice became the focus of my journey. The voice became a GPS by which I would set my course. That voice became the sound that would set the lost free. That, that voice would be the sound that would call me home. And today, the voice is calling. Stop wandering. Stop wandering. Stop wandering. Stop living lost. Stop living without purpose. Stop living without meaning. Stop living with an end that has a ruin. Stop living to destruction. Stop living to yourself and live to Him. Today, in this house, are people who are lost. And for some of you, 
You don't know who Jesus is. He's been searching. He's been knocking. He's been knocking at the door. Say, come on, man, just trust me. Come on. Come on. Some are lost because you're separated from God. Separated from his hand. Separated. You're separated from the master. You're separated from the shepherd. You're separated from the father. You're lost. Life seems to have no purpose. Life has, or life has limited purpose and meaning. You're lost. Life has no joy. I told you, I've told you for five and a half years, and I will tell you for the next five and a half years. Every day I have sadness over losing my son, and every day I have the joy of the Lord that's my strength. It's not, it's not that the joy, the joy of the Lord is not the absence of pain. The joy of the Lord is not the absence of sorrow. The joy of the Lord is there in spite of the sorrow. And the Bible says it becomes my strength. Without me giving my heart to him, I would never know what that is. Without me giving my life to him, I would never know what that is. I'd be living in a lost condition, not knowing what to do with that pain. Not knowing what to do with it. But there's a voice. And that voice doesn't allow me to stay in that lost place. You're in the house, but you're not in the hand. You're in the house, but you're not in the hand. He's your Savior, but He's not your Lord. He's your Savior, but He's not your Master. He's your ticket to heaven, but He's not Lord of your life. You'll never find the fulfillment without Him being Lord of your life. You're lost because you've been hanging on to your life instead of giving up your life. Is what the Bible says. Even this morning I was writing this. God said, you're watching your live right now. You're watching live right now. At this moment, and God says, give up your life and you'll find life. Give it up and you'll find it. You're watching at this moment. You've been searching for purpose, but purpose has literally been searching for you in the name of Jesus. You're watching live at the moment. You've been searching for meaning, but meaning has been searching for you. Outside of him, you cannot find true purpose and true meaning. And they may be watching weeks from this live. They may be watching on TV. It's no accident. It's no accident. The timing's no accident. It's not coincidence. God has a word for you. God says, come on. Come back to me. Get in my hand. Get in my hand. It's at this moment that Jesus is calling. A life of being found is a life of purpose. It's a life of meaning. It's a life of destiny. Yes, it's life going to heaven. But more oh my, it makes the journey in between so much better. It's a life of joy. It's a life of passion. And you say, and, and listen to me this morning, and it's not about what you do. Some of you are always saying, but, 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 but you don't understand, Pastor. All I do is I, I, just, I just drive a truck. Stop that nonsense. Stop that nonsense. This is not about what you do. It's about who you are, wherever you are. Because here's what the Bible says. Paul told the Corinthians, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you have from God, and that you're not your own, for you've been bought with a price. Now watch this. There glorify God in your body. You, you see, the purpose of my life is to glorify God. If I'm driving a truck, I'm going to glorify God. If I'm digging a ditch, let's glorify God. If we're up here preaching a sermon, let's glorify God. If we're, uh, uh, you, you, you pick it today. It's wherever you are, whatever you're doing, your main purpose is to glorify God. Not glorify self, but glorify God. Now, God the Father sent his Son so that you and I could be found and now we live a life that glorifies him. Hasn't separation from him been long enough? Now instantly, I'm telling you, instantly, 
The believers are putting up a wall. Oh, no, I'm not lost. I'm found. I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Praise God. I want you to live a fulfilled purpose now. Now. Salvation, the true meaning of salvation was never just about getting to heaven. It was about the totality of your life now. And I say today, today is the day for this house to say, I will no longer be lost in the house because I want to be in the hand. I say today is the day in this house that you say, I give up my life for his life. I don't want to live in a lost condition. I don't want to live in a partially lost condition. I don't want to live in a partially found condition. I want to be found and live in the fullness of what it is to be found. Today is that day. Today. And it's an act of grace upon the heart of God, the part of God, and it is an act of faith on your part. So here's what I want to do. I want you to stand with me. We're going to sing a song. You know this song. You know it well. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I don't want everybody moving around. Your singers, I got to go where they got to go. I know that. But would you honor me for a few moments? Would you honor the Lord this morning? Would you make this a sacred moment? Would you make this a holy moment? This is not a time to beat people to the bread table. This is not a time to beat people out the door. This is a time to say, let me take some introspection. Let me take some inspection of my life. Let me take an evaluation of where I am. Let me today say, I want to be found. I want to live out the fullness of that. That I'm going to give up my old. When that prodigal came back, the coin could not come back. It was inanimate. The sheep, they say are dumb animals, couldn't find its way back. It was vulnerable to death by a predator. But the son, the son, he had to come back by his own free will. He had to come back based upon who, the, who he knew his father to be, the character of the father. But even in that, he was limited in what he thought. He thought he could come back as a slave, and those, no, no father is ever going to receive their son back as a slave. You see, but he came back humble, contrite, because the spirit of the return is more important than the return itself. Haven't you wandered aimlessly long enough? Haven't you lived without full purpose long enough? Don't you want to know what it'd be like to live in the fullness of being found? I'd love to know the rest of the story of Zacchaeus. Some people say he became he, I forget where, but Peter might know, that some people believe that legend teaches that he actually became the first bishop of some church somewhere. It's an amazing thing to think about it. Tax collector to a leader of the church. How many say today I want to be found? I want to live in the fullness of found. There's a voice calling. There's a voice calling. Follow the voice. Follow the voice. Come on. Come on. Let's respond to his act of grace this morning with an act of faith. As we begin to sing this song, let's move out in an act of faith saying, I want to be found. 
I know instantly, all of a sudden, uh, I am saved. I'm not talking just about salvation. Oh, today can be a day of salvation for some. And today needs to be a salvation for some. You've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've never actually acknowledged Him as Lord of your life, as Savior, Redeemer. Some of you have done that. But my, my, my. My, my, my. You're like the people in the wilderness. Living out of Egypt. Wandering in circles. But not living in fullness. Today's the day you cross over. Today's the day you follow the voice in the fulfillment. Today's that day. Come on, move out as we sing. Move out as we sing if that's what you want this morning. Move out if that's what you want. Come on, Troy, lead us in this great song. Let me say this. Today the Lord is called. And he wants to find you. And you don't need to come up and, you know, you don't need to make a, a come to an altar. You may go home today and you may think about this message and say, Lord, I give you my life. I give you my life. I give up my life. I take yours. I want to be in your hand. Let me close with this. I haven't done this for a while. And I can't pray for everybody today, and, but I can pray for everybody today. Now, just, just, just take your hands and do this. Remember how we do this? Just hold your hands out and look at me. Yeah, this is not the time to close your eyes. Just look at me. Because this is that great verse I love to read from time to time. That is a great prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And I'm going to say this prophetically today. For some of you, this is what's going to happen. And give you peace. And give you peace. Some of you haven't had peace in a long time. Your mind hasn't stopped. Your mind hasn't stopped running. You've been out in rush, unrest. And I don't know why the Lord's speaking this to me right now. There's been an unrest. And you're getting weary. God's, and I say to you today, and that he would give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people said, amen. amen. You don't have to sing something. <laughs> God bless you. Have a great week. God loves you. Let him find you.